You're watching Zoo Tours, the channel that takes you on a virtual field trip to the zoo. Welcome back to another installment of our series into the wilds of Ohio. I hope you're all prepared for the finale of the open air safari. If you're not, it means you didn't watch part one and part two. We left off at the mid-sized carnivore center. We once again got back on the bus to finish this two and a half hour tour inside even larger fields with even larger and rarer animals. But before we do that, let's get those comments going with this question of the episode. What is your favorite conservation success story and why? On our way to the carnivore center, we saw the park's debut species grazing in the woods, but they're not always trying to be out of sight. By the end of Beatles Mania, the Chevalsky's horse was not so kindly escorted out of the wild. But like the David's deer, the horse was already in a handful of zoos. So by the early 90s, several of them collaborated in a reintroduction program. 16 horses were released back into Mongolia, and it wasn't long before that extinct in the wild status was changed to endangered, and the Chevalsky's horse got one heck of a comeback story. Once again, this tour crosses over to the other side of Spillman Lake. As we sort of saw earlier, the pasture is home to more than just talkings and deer. Bactrian camels, a symbol of conservation, critically endangered and on the brink of extinction. What I'm telling you is true, from a certain point of view. What you're looking at actually doesn't technically even exist in the wild. They're domestic. But there are wild Bactrian camels in Central Asia. While it's common for the same species to branch off and either become wild or domestic, the two camels are actually considered a separate species. If that smell around here isn't them, and you're certain that it's not you, then let's just all point fingers at the Javan Bantangs, cattle that are everything domestic cattle aren't. First of all, they're wild. They dwell in tropical forests of Southeast Asia, are very elusive and so therefore rarely ever sighted, but worst of all, endangered. However, their conservation story is for another time. Though the wilds doesn't always get an A in geography, the first half of the park is dubbed as Asia. The last three remaining paddocks make up their African side. And like the rest of the place, they did not spare any expense on space. Coming up on our right, the zebra has stripes to avoid being spotted, and because plaid wasn't an option, they're both beautiful and functional. They repel insects, heat from the sun, and allegedly confuse predators when they're on the run. It does not, however, repel habitat loss and poaching, which has brought the Grevy zebra's numbers down 85% over the last few decades. So this fashion sense should really be advertised that it works on bugs and lions and not humans. In the next similar sized paddock over, which is only a measly 27 acres, we have everyone's favorite endangered African hoofstock. That's right, the scimitar horned oryx. Whether it's the wilds or the wild, consider yourself lucky to see one of these. Though the wordplay doesn't really work in this case because they're put down as extinct in the wild. But a few years ago, several herds have been released in North African countries. Maybe somewhat obsessed with oryxes can give you a rundown on their new numbers, but I do know that they are breeding and breeding well where they belong. I know sometimes I make it seem like just because an animal's popular doesn't mean that it can't be endangered, but I mean, the average person probably wouldn't guess that a giraffe was endangered. You go to a zoo and there's little chance that you won't find one. You go to the African plains and you probably have a bigger chance of running into giraffes. I don't know, I've never been there. But you might not find them for long. Despite what I was told, being tall doesn't apparently get you everything. The Maasai giraffe's population has dipped 50% over the last three decades. You probably want different facts that don't involve extinction of our favorite animals. Well, that's too bad. The truth unfortunately hurts, and it does actually fit the theme of this conservation center. The park's sixth and final giant pasture is also the largest uninterrupted exhibit on the tour, and it's bigger than most of the zoos that we've covered. Now, about not having some good news, I guess I do have one thing. The Bactrian deer of Turkestan and Afghanistan suffers greatly from gold panning and military conflict. And though they still are in the red, their population saw an 80% increase over the last 50 years. Besides the population of the common eland community, there's not much common about them. They're considered very cow-like. In fact, they're not just popular for their meat, but for their milk. Eland milk is three times fattier 
and it's two times more protein than the milk of a dairy cow. And if refrigerated, it can last 80 times longer. Oh, and how can I almost forget the southern white rhinoceros? Rhinos, an actual symbol of conservation. Two of the five rhino species don't even number in the hundreds. And the northern white rhino might even be extinct by the time that you watch this video. But their cousins to the south, and I'm glad I get to at least use this graphic, are near threatened. Not endangered, not vulnerable. Yet, that horn is still in high demand. So breeding as much as possible can't hurt. The wilds is the only facility outside of Africa to breed four and five rhino generations removed from their wild-born ancestors. Their most recent baby boom marked the eighth, fifth generation calf born right here. By this point, Joseph Williams was blessing the rains down in Ohio, and while I was the only one on the bus getting soaked, the rhinos were having the time of their lives. We were invited to join an earlier tour group, and so therefore we would have stayed dry. But in the end, I would not have traded it for this absolutely magical experience. A rhino coming at you may be a little unsettling, but believe me, that fear doesn't compare to a close encounter with an ostrich. I've heard enough keeper stories to know that you probably would be looking into the eyes of the most dangerous animals at the wild. As we continue our final approach through exhibit number one, you'll say hi and goodbye to a couple of familiar faces, most likely the Szechuan Takins and growing herd of David's deer, which by the way, the wilds just shared that 11 were born at the park in the span of a month. When all is said and done, your group will be dropped off at the gift shop and overlook to take in the view of North America's largest conservation center one last time. As if you needed another reason to come to Ohio, the wilds probably has the least amount of animals you'll ever find in a zoo setting, but the experience alone might make the biggest impact you'll ever get from a zoo. Now that may be all for their open air safari, but zoo tours is not done with the wilds. One day I'd like to show you their wild side tour and brave out the winter tour to find out where these giants go when the temperatures drop. Let me know your thoughts and if you ever plan on visiting the wilds yourself. As we close things out, you can either support the channel with a subscription or help your zoo style by getting yourself a professional zoo gift shop quality tea for half the price. Right now, there's 45 options to choose from and the links are in the comments. That'll do it for now. I want you to see if you can answer this episode's trivia question. And thank you all for joining me at the Wilds.